wish all our viewers peace, tranquility, prosperity. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. It is an assurance that we have a, no ill will in our heart, but a sense of respect, dignity, and good wishes for all mankind. We pray to the Lord of the universe to shower his blessings and bounties on all creatures of this earth. May the creator and the sustainer of the universe guide all human beings to the right path. Amen. Now we divert all our attention to the final book of our Lord in order to reform our notions, emotions and actions as endorsed by our creator in his book of guidance. It will not only make our life worthwhile on this earth, but assures excellent rewards in the hereafter. We profess and testify to the oneness of our Lord and strive for purification and perfection of our own life by emulating the character of the last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who is the best model for the entire humanity. Dear viewers, no other course on this earth can promise a more comprehensive development of our personality than the teachings of the Holy Quran and the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Today, we shall ponder over verse 8 of chapter 23 and find out what morals that is contain for us. May Allah guide us to the right path. Ameen. Auzu billahi shaitan rajeem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Wallazina hum le amana tihim wa ahdihim ra'oon Sadaqallahu lazim Before rendering this verse into English, let us admit that the translation of the original revelation that comes directly from the mighty throne of the Allah, the most exalted one, is not at all possible in any language of the world. It is only an attempt to be close to what this verse means. What messages does it convey to mankind? May the Lord of the worlds help us in our humble efforts. The Lord says, The truly virtuous and grateful are those who are faithful to their trust and to their pledges. A human life passes through various stages where we interact with our fellow human beings at social, cultural, commercial and economical levels. These interactions are made under certain commitments. Sometimes, these commitments are on the record, like the agreement for commercial transaction or public contacts. Then there are many silent commitments, as the social ethics and norms, which are neither documented in the black and white nor announced publicly, still we remain morally committed to them. During the short span of our life, we have to play divergent roles at a time. For instance, a man performed the role of a son as well as that of a father simultaneously, in front of his old parents, he is an obedient son, while he acts as a caring father when the children are around. Does he make any agreement before discharging his duties in such family matters? Is he a signatory to any contact made among the family members? Certainly not. Still, he performs his duty honestly and most sincerely as he is mor morally and socially obligated to do so. Moreover, he offers his services voluntarily without any charges. In a broader sense, this verse indicates that the people who keep their commitments, those who honor their words, they are the winner. Every person has a desire to achieve success. He wants to be successful in every field of human activities, but he keeps changing his targets with the advancing age. In his student life, he wants to fare well in his examination. In the next stage of his life, he looks for lucrative career. But everyone does not get all that he longs for. This is what God wants us to realize, our helpless in achieving our searching and longings. In verse 24 and 25 of chapter 53, he says, Amli linsana ma tamanna falillahi la khiratu walula Is therefore man whatever he wishes? Nay! For Allah belongs hereafter and the life of this world. Every human being will admit this stark reality that a man does not get all that he craves for. Although he makes great efforts to fulfill his desire, he has to make compromises with the situation. Bear it all with patience. 
whether he admit or not, this world is not complete in itself. Look at the life in this world. It lacks its climax. It remains incomplete in many respects. As the book of Allah informs us, we will have its counterpart in the next world that is everlasting. To emerge victorious in that final phase of our life, we need to fulfill certain conditions as enjoyed by our Lord. And any sane person would prefer to assure that success of that eternal life rather than bargaining it with this temporal world. Even in our social life, we see that the people who are true to their words, who keep their commitment, they are respected in the society. They are honored in the society for their good conduct. Their integrity is beyond suspicion. In business dealing, they are trusted upon. Their words carry more weight than any written document. These noble qualities heighten their status in the society and add a charm to their personality. Still, all these achievements in this world pale into insignificance when compared to the lofty gains and ultimate success in the next world. The verse 20 to 22 of the chapter 13 of the Holy Quran invites our attention to his great success. Auzu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Allazina yusuna bi ahdillahi wa la yanquzuna al-misaq. Wallazina yasiluna ma amar allahu bihi ayhu sala. Wa yakshona rabbahum wa yakhafuna su al-hisab. Wallazina sabru ibtigha wajh rabbihim. Wa aqamu salata wa anfaku mimma razaqnahum. Sirru wa al-aniyatan. وَيَدْرَوْنَا بِالْحَسْنَةِ السَّيِّعَةَ أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ أُقْبَدَّارِ Sadaq Allah. Those who are endowed with insight, who are true to their bond with Allah and never break their covenant and who keep together what Allah has bidden to be joined and stop in awe of their sustainer and fear the most evil reckoning which awaits such as do not respond to him and who are patient in adversity seeking continence of their sustainer and are constant in prayer and spent on others secretly and openly out of what we provide for them as sustenance and who repel evil with good. It is these that shall find their fulfillment in the hereafter. The people who are conscious of their accountability in front of their Lord know that they must contribute from whatever resources granted to them by the bountiful God. They are the men of courage, commitment, conviction and compassion. They acquire inner strength by practice, practicing utmost patience and forbearance. They are always ready to extending a helping hand to those who are in trouble. They do not like to make a show of their charitable deeds, even if the situation does not permit them to carry out philanthropic activities unexposed. They contribute only to seek the pleasure of their Lord and not for any worldly gains. They stand by those who are in need of their help, be they personally known to them or stranger. They are guided by the spirit of humanity. While helping the poor and the destitute, they know the value of the man, the best creation of their Lord. They also know, know that every human being is a unique creation of their Lord. People feel relaxed in the presence of their graceful character, affectionate and caring. They are the symbol of hope for the wretched soul. They stand tall like the lighthouse of those who lost in the sea of suffering. They never lose any hope even when they see no light at the end of the tunnel. They are the optimistic to the core. In the face of any adversity, they rely on the mercy of the most merciful God. For they know that Nothing is impossible for their Lord and that even if they give up hope, it will take them close to the infidelity. God Almighty does not like those who are ungrateful to Him and therefore they always remain grateful to their Lord. They want the rewards of all their altruistic deeds from their Lord only, whose bounties and generosities knows no bond. How magnetic and charming personality such people would have. What a huge profit they would earn for their deposit made with their Lord. They did not crave for worldly gains. They did not wish to encash any order in this material world. They wanted neither fame nor power, neither government nor kingdom. They only sought the pleasure of their Lord Almighty. 
Almighty God characterizes these people in verse 76 upon 9. Inama nut aimokum lebajil lahila nori do minkum jaza o wala shukura. Their endeavor remains. We feed you for the sake of Allah alone. We desire no recompense from you nor any thanks. We stand in awe of our sustainer. We have to face him for trial on a fateful day. These people would be rewarded on the day of accountability so handsomely. No man in this world has ever dreamt of it. Almighty God would bestow upon them his marvelous tre treasure that would never be exhausted. He would grant them the extravagant luxuries that would be everlasting. What is the price these people paid for such an amazing award? All through their life, they remain committed to their words, promises, agreements and accords. As long as they lived on this earth, they try to fulfill their obligation with utmost sincerity and devotion. Till their last breath, they remain faithful to their Lord. They remain committed to their family, their environment and their territory. It is because they had made a commitment to their Creator, they had surrendered themselves unto Him. They had on oath accepted His supremacy. They acknowledged that there is no God except Allah. They had pledged themselves to their Lord. They did not repudiate their claim. They proved themselves true to their words. And how could they take an, anyone else as their God when they had recognized their Creator? They had witnessed the might of their Lord. They knew the worth of their mortal self. They had realized the triviality of their own self in the grand system of their Lord. They knew how frail is their entity when they stood under the vast unending sky the blazing sun, the dark clouds and the raging winds. They had seen the thriving cities bursting with activities turned to ashes within seconds. Let us come back to ourselves. Tsunami, Katrina, earthquakes are still fresh in our memory. Do we have any escape route or any way out? We have nowhere to flee, no escape from his domain. So why not surrender? When a man pronounces his faith in only one God, and submit himself unto the most powerful almighty God relying completely on his limitless might and benevolence he remains unfazed even while facing the worst crisis he stands apart from the crowd he bears a good moral character he does not live in the world of fanciful dreams he is not guided by the superstitious belief he analyzes the facts and admits the truth he is the man with sound character Rational and logical thinking, purity in thoughts and actions, a disciplined life is the hallmark of his character. The firmness of his belief does not let him forget that he has certain commitment with the Lord. Along with it, he remembers his responsibility for his family and his kinsfolk. By blood, a man is related to four different families. This quality and system is not found in any other creature of the world. His relation with the family of his father, his relation with the family of his mother, with the family of his spouse, and his relation with the family of his sons or daughters-in-laws. A man is socially and morally indebted to these families. Man is a social creature and at various stages of his life, he directly or indirectly receives moral or social support from the society. It is obligatory on us that we fulfill all our commitments in words and deeds in every sphere of our life and with every section of the society. It will bring a desirable change in our personality and take us to the new heights of morality and dignity. We will not only be in possession of a charming and elegant personality and in high social status, but in the hereafter, we will be qualified for the mercy and limitless bounties of our Lord. May our Lord forgive all our sins and grant us entry into the gardens of paradise. Ameen. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samyun alim wa tubalayna inna kanta tawabur rahim. Rabbana la tuzik kulubana baada is hadaitana bahablana min ladunka rahma inna kanta al wahab. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati ame sifun wa salamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Thank you very much.